I don't know. This this is a uh, the next generation plumbus. I don't know how this happened. That's better. First thing is you want to be in a well-ventilated area. That's why I might sound loud because uh, the space is open and it just rained and I live next to the highway where everyone's sloshing around. So, yay. We got the molds here. This is gonna be uh, just a single linkage here. Here we got another one of those. Here's a three, here's a four, here's a six, here is an eight. Um, the eights are weird in that uh, these indexing features, there's only uh, so many of them, so you can only close them in a certain orientation. Uh, just keep that in mind. We got the magnets here. These are uh, three by eight millimeters. Um, I didn't want to go all out and like support every type, so it's just these for right now. These ones that I have are weird in that, you know, it's like a eight by not exactly three at all, right? But um, your magnets may vary. And I built these based off the ones I had. And so who knows what trouble that's gonna cause. Just throwing it out there. I'm gonna close the garage actually for right now. Pliers here, uh, silicone gun with silicone. This is gonna be the uh, clear number one. We're gonna make something that's, depending on uh, who you go by, it's either called uh, Proto Putty or Ugu. But uh, I don't know, to make it, you need the clear number one silicone, cornstarch. Uh, things get messy, so paper towels for sure. Food coloring, something to put it in and stir it in. Okay, get back up there. Get back up there. All right. Uh, some of these anchors, some super glue to glue these anchors. You may need a blade if the silicone tube is brand new. Some trigger clamps to uh, hold these molds into place. All right. Hopefully this is this is everything. It's, it's quite a bit. So take some of the magnets and just squeeze them into here. The exact polarity you should use, I don't know, that's up to you. I mean, for the even number of connections, you can kind of create your own system, but then, you know, like, what do you do with the threes? That's on you, man, I don't know. These are big, heavy questions that I can't answer for you. If you want to super glue them into place, that's your call. Uh, not necessary. Let me see, I guess uh, I'll show this six also. We won't do all of these. You get the idea once we do a few of these, right? The polarities that you do decide on will kind of dictate what kind of structures you can create, but um, I don't know. I squeeze that last one in there. And so we got these guys here, they're all magnetized up. The next thing we wanna do is get a few of these magnets, make sure they're uh, separated from each other. And you will have to decide like which uh, side you, well, that you want flipped. Oh my God, quit conspiring against me magnets. Super glue. Right there, just a little bit. And then there is an up and down on these. Uh, there's gonna be a flatter side and that's what goes on the super glue. And like I said before, not in this video, but just before in general and other uh, things, um, be careful with super glue and magnets. These things can fly and just, you know, throw a uh, super glue wherever and adhere wherever. So uh, yeah, I'm already making a mess on my fingers. Right here, all right, that's two. I lost track of the polarity, so I'm just gonna flip uh, some of these and uh, yeah, it'll get used where they get used. Try to center them as much as possible, although it's not too important. This one's actually in reverse, oh, okay. Ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. Be the, be the lesson you wanna see in the world.
I'm gonna try to still use this even though it's got a bad surface now. Yeah, I put this one on the wrong side, so this one should have been this way. Yeah, I did that on purpose to show you what not to do. All right, I'm gonna give it some time to dry and uh, yeah, I'll be back in a bit. All right, after the anchor, uh, after the glue on the anchor is set and these two are bonded together, yeah, attach them in, try to center them on um, to the magnets. And then I need to make a few more to fit for these guys and make sure that the polarity is correct. Whoa, is this just blown out? Woo! So it's gonna be like that. And these I can't use for this guy here. Maybe I'll save them for later for a different piece that has a different polarity. But I need six here. I need to figure out the lighting in here. Now we'll let these dry. Dry? Cure? Uh, I guess with super glue it's uh, acrylate. Cyanoacrylate, it's like an acrylic that's a forming, I guess, so it's, it's really curing. I don't know, these are just words that we use, right? What are words? All right, and now through the power of editing, it's uh, later. Ooh, man, was that blown out. All right, fit these in there. Try to get them centered after they uh, snap in. All right, so we got these and these all rigged up. Now we just need the silicone. How much to pour? Not sure. So a little bit more is better than a little bit less, but it's also nice if you have a little bit of uh, these prepared extra so that if you make too much, you can just make these singles uh, with whatever extra you have. But uh, yeah. So that'll probably be enough for the six. That'll be enough for the two. This is probably like way more than uh, what I need, but whatever. We also need some squeeze out. Well, we also expect some squeeze out for it to be done properly, so uh, yeah. Okay, food coloring. Let's mix this in a bit. Let me get another stick for the cornstarch. Once we add the cornstarch, it's gonna be an accelerant for curing, and this is gonna go from like uh, needing a day to cure to like 15 minutes. It's also gonna off gas like a lot of um, acidic vapor, which is why you need to be in open space. And so I'm gonna actually open up the garage real quick. Also fine powder, don't inhale this. What's the exact mixture? I don't know. I'm just a guy mixing stuff. There's probably better formulas and guidance on the internet, but for now, usually it's, uh, you can't go wrong with just like a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So that's what we're doing. Try to mix this and get a good consistency. Again, don't spend too long doing this. The uh, Your work time is, uh, you know, five to 15 minutes on that order of magnitude, depending on your formula and whatnot. You do want to get this kind of kind of a decent mix, even though you're kind of a, um, on a time, time crunch here, just so that you have a good consistency of color. No pockets of cornstarch or dye or, or clear, uh, uh, you know, clear silicone. Silicone? Silicone, silicone. All right, that's what we're going with. Try to squeeze it in here behind the magnets. You're also worried about, uh, you know, leaving in air bubbles too, but this is not an exact process I'm showing you. Uh, or I mean to say, I don't have good technique and uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Why are you watching me do it? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna put some, uh, I guess we'll put some in here too. Ooh, look at that pocket. Pocket of dye. That's what I'm talking about. You're following, you're watching a video from a guy who has pockets of dye like that. There's some pockets there. I'm gonna try to mix it in after the fact. Not ideal, but if you have the opportunity and no one knows afterwards, then, uh, you know, we'll fool them all. They'll never even suspect that we're the kind of people who uh, don't mix thoroughly enough to uh, have pockets of dye in their silicone mixture, right? Well, ha, 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 ha. We got some silicone in the indexing parts too, but, uh, you know, we just force it out of there. We're right about now. Put these two clamshell pieces together. We'll just squeeze out with these trigger clamps. We got the squeeze out. We'll try to recapture some of this, not all of it though. But this is still usable, as long as our work time isn't up. I'm 
gonna try not to make a mess while we're at it, but no promises. Like there, there's a mess. See? I promised you no promises and I delivered. So we're just gonna keep on squeezing out until it's pretty tough to go more. We don't wanna challenge uh, getting this like super squeezed out or you know, at a point where the molds or the clamps will break. Hopefully the work time's not up for uh, these other two, but it is getting tough McGruff, Chicago, Illinois, with uh, this material here. All right, we'll leave some squeeze out there so we can gauge the material when it comes time to check up on it. So put that in there. Oh yeah, it's getting tough. And I am smelling the acid. Let me get some more clamps. Get these away from the paper towels. Oh, you've already taken a victim. All right. All right, let's try to recapture a little bit of the squeeze out. And we'll see if we still have enough work time to reuse it for this one last guy here. Yeah, this is very hard to work with now. Maybe we got enough. We got enough for everything we set out to do. Hopefully very few, if any, air bubbles, including uh, the area behind the magnets where it's kind of hard to uh, fill material in there. I'm um, going to let this set because I don't have a good formula. I don't know uh, good times for these, but we got to close this up too. But let's say, let's check in 40 minutes. All right, so 40 minutes later, the consistency seems like it's not tacky. It's not still, you know, still a liquid or anything like that. So, I mean, we could give it a little bit more time, but I think it's at the point where we could also release it. So there are slots uh, on the sides where we can stick in a flat, uh, a flat tool and twist to release. You got a lot of flashing, um, but uh, such is life. Um, be careful with the magnets right now. Uh, this is, you know, solid, but it's still in a weakened state. It's still curing. It's just at a point where we can release it earlier than instead of waiting until it's fully cured. Um, so, you know, we could uh, take this out and then make another batch and use the molds while this is curing outside. Pretty much when you take this out, be careful around the magnets here because, you know, it is still being... Uh, the magnets on the product is being held to the magnets on the mold and we don't want that to uh don't want to forget about it not support it properly and have it tear oh we got a pocket of dye right there uh we'll get all these out and then we'll deal with the flashing afterwards the flashing being like all this uh flat squeeze out that's not a part of the actual product that needs to be cut all right gotta be gentle oh that's really stuck in there is it like glued or it shouldn't be the stuck you know, here's what we're going to do. we got these holes right there. Um, we're just going to push out both magnets. Luckily, we didn't glue down the, the mold magnet. There we go. Why was it so stubborn? I don't know. Or we'll put that back in later. Whatever. All right. find a place where we can start uh, pulling it off without risk risk of damaging it. Yeah, the amount of force I was using to pull it didn't seem safe. Well, I gotta fix that before I upload it. Come on. Here we go. Slide these extra magnets off if we can. Tear off some of the flashing that's easy to take off. And then we'll trim the rest of it later. Let's see, can we... Wow, these are really, uh... That one's easy enough. That one's easy enough. Uh... I wonder if... I didn't give the super glue enough time to dry. Um... It could be glued together. Who knows? It does not feel like they should normally be this adhered together. Oop, there we go. Well, that's the technique. Simple enough. There we go.
So these are at a point where it's, um, you know, you could, we can uh, demold it, but it's not fully cured yet. So it's not strong yet. And it's still, um, you know, it's still polymerizing and doing the chemistry that it needs to do, which also means that it's still off gassing that like um, acidic vapor. So yeah, keep this outside for a while. Um, I'm just gonna throw out eight to 24 hours. Um, and then we could probably, I don't know, I'm already pulling the flashing off because it's just too fun but uh, you could probably trim it afterwards or if you're too tempted, you could do it right after you. I don't know, I don't know. At some point though, um, you just cut these with uh, snips or scissors or a blade. So here's the original toy, the, uh, the commercial one. It's just gonna be better in general, uh, you know, than this, this janky uh, craft molding. But um, you know, they're all, they're all pluses and there's only so much you can do with that, so. Uh, we're able to extend this uh, toy platform, we'll call it. That makes it sound fancy, right? With the, the four, with this one here, you could probably match the polarity of, uh, of the actual commercial product one. But for the others, it's kind of up in the air on what the polarity should be because there's no reference for it. Um, and there are some ambiguities on what's actually useful and uh, more importantly, what would be fun. And uh, these will actually perform better and they're more durable, plastic, the rubber's better and all that. Um, you know, this Ubu stuff is like hobby grade, um, hobby grade solution to um, fast, uh, safe enough, low tech moldable rubber. But I do have some other ones that are also made. You can see they're uh, snapping together. I think these were earlier tests with different magnet sizes. So this is probably a five by five. Oh, this rubber's seen better days. It's seen better days. And these uh, small 5x5s, five they seem fine for a while, but then you get to issues where like it's just not strong enough to uh, make certain structures with tight, tight corners, tight bends, which is why I went for the bigger one. The trade-off there is you don't have too much rubber surrounding it, so it does make it uh, more dicey that you could... Uh, you know, mold it to where the wall's too thin. But I mean, the walls, they're even here and there's there's rubber all around, right? I don't know, this, this is a, uh, the next generation plumbus, maybe.